Hey, what's going on? It's Dean, and I'm gonna go over some items that you might need or you might want to consider when opening up a online store, or if you already have one, ways that'll make your your shipping side a little bit more easier. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's begin with that. I would say that the number one thing that I have at this very moment that helps us out the absolute most when it comes to shipping would probably be a thermal printer. This little thermal printer is the Dymo 4XL. It will print out 4x6 um, labels, which is pretty much the standard label. And it makes your life a lot easier, honestly. Um, if you have one or two orders, um, I don't particularly think it would you would see the absolute benefit in it. But if you were shipping out multiple orders, it really does cut down on the time of you having to cut out the, the label, like if you're printing it out on a regular printer. And it just makes it a very seamless transition. You just print it, peel, stick, onto the next one. It's pretty much, pretty much all it is. The only thing you gotta really realistically worry about on these is buying the, the actual thermal paper. The thermal paper itself is a little bit, can become quite expensive, but I feel that the time that it saves me in terms of like paper, ink, or not time, but what it saves me is the paper, the ink, the time of cutting it, the tape to tape it onto the box, it makes makes it completely worth it. And I don't think that we could live without it right now. The second thing that I, that I believe is uh, something that you might want to consider having is a scale. Ours isn't necessarily a very fancy scale, uh, but again, we don't ship out very, very heavy items. Um, this one can go up to 500 grams maximum. I don't know what that is in pounds, but I mean, it's, taking care of up to 10 pounds for us no problem well, again we don't ship out anything else like that any anything more heavier and I would say that the reason why you would want to have this versus not having a scale um, it's it's twofold the first being that you accurately get to measure how much is gonna an item is gonna weigh when you're gonna ship it so you can calculate to your customer and you can also take that into consideration when you're pricing your items um, how much is gonna actually cost to ship it out um, sometimes if you under under calculate it when you ship it out your customer is going to have to cover the difference if they want to pick up the item and you definitely don't want a customer to do that um, it's probably not in the best best practices if you were to ship something uh, say it weighs a pound and then when it gets there it's like five pounds and your customer has to pay the the difference or vice versa like if you have an item that's you put five pounds, they're charging you the freight, which you then charge the customer, when in reality it's only one pound, and they don't give you the difference back as far as I'm aware of. The third item that I would say that is absolutely imperative to shipping stuff out, I would say is bubble wrap, void fill, anything of the sort that's gonna help you protect the item that you're sending out. Um, I would assume that anything that you're, you're shipping or selling is something that's, not that it's valuable, because it could be a low item, but something that took you care or time to, to make and that your customer also wants. They want it in the condition that's intended in. So I would highly suggest you wrapping the item, making sure that it arrives there safely. You don't have to use bubble wrap. The bubble wrap that we use is not necessarily the absolute best for shipping everything, but I do notice that it is the best for what we, we, uh, what we ship out, which tends to be coffee mugs and wine glasses. Um, it's very important that your item gets there Number one, price correctly, proper labels, and perfect though, essentially. Uh, moving on to the next one, I would say that the fourth most important item that you could have is honestly the correct size of box for the item that you're sending. Since we send out coffee mugs and wine glasses, for the most part, um, this tends to be the perfect size for us. It's a six cubed box, so it's six, six, and six. And it fits coffee mugs when they're perfectly wrapped very nicely. Um, it doesn't leave a ton of space in terms of for it to move around. But it also has enough where it's going to get protected. And you want to make sure that when you wrap the coffee mug or wrap the item, that it's not really to the actual end of the box. Because if when it's in transit, um, if any anything were to hit that side, it could potentially break it, um, crack it, fracture it, make it not arrive in the... Uh, in its intended way, which is going to cause you a lot of headaches. Um, essentially, your customer 
will probably refute the charges, um, say that it came out bad, um, quite a couple things. But you can also, if you're sending stuff over a pound, make sure you get these priority boxes from USPS. They're free. You know, all you gotta do is sign up for an account online and they'll send you sizes depending on what you want. So this one in particular is seven by seven by six. And this one will fit two wine glasses or two coffee mugs instead of the, the standard six by six, which only really has one. Not only that, you get to save a little bit more money just by knowing your, your shipping method and rates and all that other stuff. Um, I think it's important that you also carry a couple different size boxes because not one box is gonna fit absolutely everything. And you also have to potentially see if a customer buys multiple items. You don't wanna send it in, let's say, six different individual boxes if they were to buy from me six different coffee mugs. You also wanna somehow save them money by shipping and less. Uh, USPS, UPS, FedEx, they do something called dimensional weight at some point where if the size of the box using their formula is bigger than the actual weight of the item. So like if you have a very awkward size box, um, they'll charge you more money based on the dimensional weight. And because it's taking more spot in their plane, truck, van, whatever, so they'll charge you more money. And at the end of the day, we wanna get our product out where we make money and a customer finds a, a good, good value in it. And finally, what I would say is that the, one of the other most important items that you could have when you're shipping out is a tape gun. It makes a world of difference, man. When you gotta tape the boxes, you gotta tape the product, you gotta tape something else. All that stuff is gonna make a world of difference when you have to do multiple boxes. And yeah, can you use a roll of tape and a box cutter? Absolutely. But sometimes it's just you gotta chug them out. Um, in this particular instance this weekend, we had to send out like 50 orders. If we had to print out the label on our printer, put it on the box, cut it, tape it on top um, with a piece of roll of tape. And I, I could just see us, in, let's say if it took us an hour and a half, I could have easily seen it would have taken at least four hours. So sometimes you have to spend a little money so you can save money. At the end of the day, we're not, um, we're not trying to work our entire lives. Um, you wanna make sure you get something out good in the time that it requires, but you don't wanna spend more time than what you need because it's realistically the one thing you can't get back. And if it, this, I forgot to ask about price, talk about price. These, this was about a couple hundred bucks, maybe one to $200. The scale was roughly about 10 to $20. Nothing crazy, um, something relatively cheap. As long as it, you know, check the reviews, make sure it doesn't say it's 10 pounds when it's really three pounds. It doesn't have to be pharmaceutical grade, but you know, boxes, these cost me roughly around 28 cents or so. If you get the other ones for free from USPS, obviously they're free. All you gotta do is make sure you order them in, in a good amount of time. And then just get yourself some tape guns. These are realistically, if you go to Walmart, I think you can buy two tape guns, not the very best quality. Uh, I'll show you a Walmart gun. I want to Sorry about that. I'll say this Walmart gun was, came two of them for $20 and it came with two rolls of tape. Um, all you gotta do is make sure you adjust the knob according to the size of the tape. You don't want it to be too loose, too too, uh, too tight. And then that's it. A couple hundred bucks. Honestly, maybe you won't have it at the start. Maybe it's not something that you'll have day one, but it's definitely something you want to use uh, going forward or think about buying on your next run because it's really going to save you time. All right. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks.